this week that perhaps from a new standpoint, uh, the most significant thing uh, that happened was uh, the presidential debates or the two individuals who want to be your next president of the United States. And um, if you follow me at all, you know that uh, I am not interested in the politics of the candidate uh, who is running for office. What I am interested in uh, is what is going to be done for small business. In the last, uh, well, I guess 10 presidential elections, uh, actually I've uh, been 11, 11 for the, yeah, 11. I have uh, been alive for 11 presidential elections in my lifetime. And I cannot think of uh, an election in all those years where more focus needs to be put on small business uh, than right now. We got a jobs report on, uh, on uh, Friday, I think it was, Thursday or Friday, and uh, there were 114,000, I think that was the number, 114,000 new jobs created. Well, I did a, I did a, uh, go back a couple of YouTubes and I did it. How many jobs were created? I do know, I remember very emphatically that in the last two months in this country, and last two months being uh, August and September, there were only 256,000 new jobs created in, in total in those two months. That number falls short by about 40,000. New jobs. No, no, actually, uh, it falls way short. There needs to be 300,000 new jobs created every month in this country for uh, a period of uh, 36 months consecutively. I don't know, that number might have changed uh, based upon some upward movement, but let's say 200,000 new jobs need to be created every month, or 250,000. That we're not doing it uh, quickly enough. Uh, we're not doing it uh, uh, expeditiously for sure. Uh, and always, always in the history of our country, it has been new businesses getting started that have provided most of the new jobs being created. Existing small businesses are not going to be creating uh, uh, lots of new jobs for a while for two very distinct reasons. Facts that have emerged uh, in the last three, four years. Number one, the productivity of this country is actually up. Last report I read, 2%. That's a good sign for existing small businesses because they are using the resources of their small businesses and uh, are able to create more productivity. However, they're doing it at the expense of uh, not creating new jobs. Why would they want to create another job if they're getting more productivity out of lesser number of jobs? That's less expense to the company. Point number two is the cost of hiring a new employee, creating a new job, is higher than it has ever been, with most of that cost 
being uh, absorbed in providing health care for employees. This scary fact still remains, and we don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm sure we'll start seeing some things happening after the first of the year uh, when a, either the same president is in place or a new president is elected uh, with regard to health care. Because as things stand right now, by the year, by January 1st, 2014, just a little over a year away, any company that has over 50 employees must provide mandated health care. By mandated, I mean somebody is going to tell them exactly what needs to be provided. So it will be a, a greater cost than exists today. That goes without question. The scary thing about it is today, that's a, a little more than a year away, we don't even know what that cost is going to be. We do know for sure that when health care is mandated for companies with over 50 employees, some small businesses are going to go out of business. Or they're going to lay more people off so they only have 49 people in their company and they are not mandated to provide expensive health care for their employees. That is a sad state of affairs and something that needs more addressing uh, than we are giving it right now. Those are the kinds of things I look for. What uh, candidates, uh, it doesn't matter what party they come from, who is willing to address that situation and come up with a meaningful, significant solution. Referring back to the uh, presidential debates, I think the best analysis uh, that I read uh, came from uh, a friend of mine, Barbara Weltman. And if you uh, follow me, you know that uh, Barbara is, uh, has uh, been a friend of our community for a long time. And in fact, uh, uh, we did a one-hour discussion together about small business. Uh, on Friday mornings, we did it for a year, and uh, Barbara's schedules changed, my schedule changed, so uh, things went in a little different direction. But uh, needless to say, uh, I follow Barbara very closely because she uh, does as much uh, for small business uh, as I have ever seen anybody do. And her specialty is uh, small business money matters, uh, specifically taxes. Barbara is an attorney uh, by training. She has made the decision to really focus on tax issues for small business uh, and, in fact, publishes uh, this book uh, with J.K. Lasser every year. This is Small Business Taxes 2012, uh, of which I keep close at hand because I learned something new on virtually every single page in this book. I just read that Bob is going to be coming out with uh, Small Business Taxes 2013 uh, very, very soon. And by the way, go to her website, barbaraweltman.com, B-A-R-B-A-R-A-W-E-L-T-M-A-N.com. And... Uh, you will uh, get sign up for anything you can on, on her page. Uh, her newsletter, her daily newsletter, uh, her big ideas uh, uh, for small business. And she comes out with a monthly newsletter, and we're going to refer to that in a second because this, this last uh, one that came out October 1st was, was actually that. On October 3rd, Barbara said the following. President Obama and Governor Romney met in a 90-minute debate focused on the economy. Questions touched on economy, taxes, the deficit, energy, and education. Each candidate talked a little about small business. Barbara asked the question, how much is little? 
If my count is correct, President Obama mentioned the term small business six times, while Governor Romney did so eight times. But it was not the number of times small businesses was mentioned, but the substance of the comments that caught my ear. I usually don't get political when it comes to discussions about small business. Uh, Barbara and I are definitely on the same page on that. Well, she said, I usually don't. I never do. Uh, I think some reasoned analysis is called for now, and here's my takeaway. The President referred to tax code changes that help small businesses, stating he lowered taxes for small businesses 18 times. While it is true there have been some targeted tax breaks for small business, uh, Barbara says, I couldn't find those 18 separate times. While saying he would not raise taxes on 97% of small business owners, he also referred to Donald Trump as a rich small business owner. That statement is perplexing, Barbara says, and I'm sure that Trump would probably disagree with the president's characterization of him. Well, we know that uh, uh, Donald Trump has openly attacked the president in the administration. But if the president was basing his remarks on the fact that the Small Business Administration, SBA, I talk about them a lot, defines a small business as a company with up to 500 employees, then technically Trump might fit the bill. Uh, Barbara mentions that, but I really haven't seen his payroll to know how many people he employs. What bothers me about the statement, she goes on to say, is that he could fit the bill. If so, then the president's agency, in my opinion, should revise the definition, she's talking about small business uh, administration, should revise the definition of small business to look at more than just the number of employees and taking into account our revenues and assets while, when classifying a company as a small business eligible for SBA guaranteed loans. As you know, uh, the SBA, it's misunderstood, they don't give loans to small business. They guarantee loans to small business up to 90% of the loan uh, based upon the nature of the loan, uh, the type of loan it is, and, 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 and what's going to be done uh, to create new jobs with that loan. That's how they make judgment on guaranteeing a loan. You still need, if you're looking for money, you still need to go to a, what I would call a traditional bank, and get that bank's commitment that they will give you the loan that you're looking for, but the bank will say, I uh, will give you the loan, but you have to get an SBA guarantee to that. So then you fill out some additional paperwork, and it's not that big a deal. It really isn't. The SBA has condensed the amount of information from what you give a bank uh, to about less than 10 pages of information. I think it might only be five or six. And you submit that information and the SBA will determine that they're going to guarantee up to 90% of that loan depending upon the nature of it. That's very, very important and I just read a, some information that um, it might be in the current administration. Uh, I don't think it's been in the last year that the SBA has guaranteed uh, over $30 billion of loans uh, to small business. That's an important thing, and that's where a lot of focus needs to be on uh, making available funding for the Small Business Administration to help guarantee loans. Now, that it doesn't necessarily help uh, myself, who uh, is a one-person operation and for all intents and purposes will always be a one-person operation. I've only had employees on my payroll one time in my life uh, for one year. Uh, I had 15 employees. We did a great job, uh, accomplished uh, our business objectives in 11 months, so it was a it was a, a wonderful group of folks that focused on doing what we did, and we did it well, and we did it profitably in 11 months. 
However, uh, I wasn't personally uh, enjoying the experience, so uh, I decided that, uh, I decided 21, 33 years ago, that uh, whatever I did for the rest of my life, uh, I was essentially going to do it on my own without a payroll, and if I needed something done that I couldn't do because I didn't have the skills to do it, or I couldn't do it as efficiently as somebody else could do it, I would outsource that function. That was a personal decision I made. So when we, when we talk about small business and starting a business, it doesn't have to necessarily be a grandiose plan. Uh, it, it needs to be simple. It needs to be very basic. It needs to be definable. You need to be able to articulate the uh, message of your company effectively to the marketplace, uh, market your business, support it with all the technology or as much of the technology as you possibly can to make your business run more efficiently. That's what we have done in David's Barter community at uh, davidsbarter.com. We have uh, developed, we have researched and developed the social marketing and social network technology that you need, anybody needs, to start a new business. Those two functions. And uh, we have created a very optimized, very Googleized landing page, which allows you to start a business efficiently, simply, effectively. I have done it several times already with the same social marketing, social network technology platform. Uh, I have about a dozen landing pages in the community, all which generate positive, high-margin cash flow. Profitable, high-margin cash flow. So all we're simply saying in the community is do what we do. Follow our model. It's working for us. And there's no reason to believe it can't work for you if you have a marketing idea or a business idea, a business product, a business service that will bring value to someone's life or someone's business and will demonstrate a, a return on in, uh, resource investment. If it does those two things, there's no reason to believe that you can't start a business with our social marketing, social network technology, and grow that business. Uh, and form the foundation, and then move on to the things that you need to do. Okay, let me finish up with uh, Barbara's statement. Uh, Governor Romney noted that small business startups are down to a 30-year low and this is a reason why jobs are not being created to the extent that they should. Note that historically small businesses have created 60 to 80 percent of all new jobs. He also pointed out that 54 percent of Americans work for small businesses in which owners pay taxes on profits on their personal tax return. That is to say, at personal income tax rates, and not at the corporate rate. Raising taxes on wealthy owners would further stymie job creation. Small business, small business owners I've talked to have indicated that they are staying on the sidelines when it comes to hiring because they don't know what's uh, going to cost them for doing so in healthcare, in taxes, and in regulations. Uh, Barbara says with authority the same things that I have been talking about for weeks, for months, for years. Bottom line, it's easy to say you support small business. It's like mom or apple pie. No one is against it. But let's see which candidates can walk the talk, the candidate or candidates running for other offices can walk the talk. I think that the debate provided an answer, but I'll be watching to learn what others are concluding. Barbara, thank you for uh, your authoritative comments uh, on the debate. Uh, and Barbara, I, says, I think, says very clearly that we need to get 
more business started uh, quickly to create more new jobs uh, quickly. And when you start a business, you create job number one. That's for you, the entrepreneur. Let's move on to uh, some other discussion about, um, let's talk about what your startup name means and matters. Why does the name of your business important? 